louder. Alright guys, so today is uh, part 5 of the Crown Vic. Uh, I could have swore I already filmed this segment once, but uh, going back and editing it again, or looking for it on my camera, can't find nothing. So what you guys are looking at right now is, uh, is uh, kind of all the tuning stuff that I have laid out for the, the Crown Vic. Basically the, the HP tuners cable, the AM wideband, uh, cheap boost gauge, uh, the 80 pound injectors, and an upgraded mass airflow sensor. Um, really upset because I, I really thought I, I did film this uh, this thing, but I, I can't seem to do it. So it seems like this thing's doing all right. Um, got the, all the intercooler piping hooked up. I don't have a blow-off valve on it right now, but uh, I just went for a quick little drive just to kind of see. I'm not latching the hood yet because I, uh, I haven't tested that fully, but it, it holds it. Um, but it uh, makes turbo noises. Tires are bald as shit too. Yeah, I need to get a bluff out hooked up on here soon. Alright guys, hopefully you guys could see this. Uh, so basically there's two pieces that come in uh, in your little wideband air fuel gauge. Um, so or there's two wires that connect to the back. So this one basically runs all your power and everything. And then this one right here that connects down to the O2 sensor. Uh, so I'm going to put this in the car and uh, kind of find a spot for it. But I already found a grommet up under there. And the grommet is right here. So I just need to pull this little grommet out and uh, and fish that, that wire through there. Yep, that's the right one. And, and uh, fish this one wire through the little end. Make sure to leave the big end out here because that's what goes down to the, the O2 sensor. Let's see. Raise the car up so I can grab it. All right, so I could see my wire right here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that guy in. And there we go. So now we got a wideband O2 sensor. Lower it back down and pull some of the slack out of it. Alright, so I'm just pulling out some of the extra slack. Get in here. Pull it the rest of the way in there. And we're good to go. We got the wideband installed. And I'll also use that same, uh, that same sleeve, that uh, same grommet to run the, the boost pressure gauge too. Or in and out of, so. Alright guys, so I uh, went to my local O'Reilly's and I got me a cap to cap off this. I got me a little uh, filter, I had this laying around to plug this little PCV thing. That's actually a one-way check valve, so it, uh, it won't let any air in, but it'll, it'll suck out of there. So I just put that on there, I figured it'll, it'll vent the crankcase pressure. Um, I hooked up the wastegate, or not the wastegate, the, the blow-off valve line right here to this factory line that goes to the um, EGR. And then right here, there's an extra little nipple right there. I'm gonna come right here. And so I got this boost gauge. It uses this like nylon style tubing um, to kind of connect. And this stuff's kind of a pain in the ass at first because it's, you almost need to like take like a heat gun and like heat it up and kind of stretch it out because it'll stay in this like form for a while. 
Um, but it has like this little compression fitting deal that you have to put around it. But it has this, uh, this little guy right there. So I could tap into this right here. So I'll just tap into that and then run that line in there. And uh, I don't know, it's just kind of interesting. Like everything about this project just just seems just kind of simple. Like all the little just dumb shit. Like there's already like two vacuum lines already right here. Um, I mean, just, just everything. It just it feels like, uh, like it's going pretty smooth. So uh, David, when he was filling this thing up with oil the other day, he spilled a bunch of shit. So I'm just kind of soaking that up. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start messing with that boost gauge. So I got Ty uh, help me out a little bit. Like I said, this stuff's kind of shitty. You gotta kind of pull some tension on it. Don't get too much heat. Just kind of stretch it out a little bit so it's less coiled. That's a lot better. Yeah, it's like double the length of our I doubled the length of the tube. Yeah, this tube is kind of shitty. I don't really like it, but it. I feel like all the one I've dealt with has been like that. Oh. It's like not long at all. All right, so I got the the wide band hooked up right here. Got the boost gauge right there. Um, so I have the positive and negative wire for the boost gauge right here and then I already have the the wires basically routed to go up here you see up in there let's see what you guys are seeing um, I basically have that uh, all that black wire that's the extra wire from the O2 sensor uh, just kind of coiled up there and zip tied out of the way and then right here is the the actual O2 or the wire that I have to hook up. So there's a red and a black wire on there that I need to hook up and uh, Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys a quick little way to hook that up So right here is a fuse box If you pop that off See all them fuses. I have this little kind of jumper fuse type of deal So all you need to do is grab an extra 5 amp fuse because that's what the AEM requires um, it's better to kind of put this on its own separate thing since kind of how expensive they are. You don't want to shock it or do anything crazy. Um, I'm probably going to tie this in with the, the the positive and the negative for or the positive for the the light on here. So when uh, when the pump is running for the the scavenge pump. So as long as I know that it didn't blow a fuse or do anything stupid, I know that if the light is on for that gauge, that the pump is running. So. Uh, just kind of a simple little way to do that, but yeah, basically the red and the black wire is positive and negative. This blue wire, I could hook that up to the data logger on my uh, HP tuners. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out that fuse, pull out a fuse that I find that has 12 volt uh, switch power, plug in another little fuse right here, and then uh, hook this up to the AM. Alright, so you can see uh, down there I got that little fuse holder in, and I got a little ground hooked up. I got the yeah, I got the, got the little fuse holder in there and the ground hooked up. So I'll go ahead and uh, turn the key. So she's pretty lean. So now I just gotta put the little cover back on and then run the, the power wire over there or connect the, the little ground guy over there for the um, the scavenge oil pump. All right, so down underneath this uh, panel right there, I have a relay hooked up, and that's hooked up for that scavenge pump. Um, normally when you're uh, you're working with, with stuff that draws a lot of current, which I don't think that pump draws very much, um, but I figured I didn't want it tied into uh, just a normal fuse that could potentially blow. Um, so I have that uh, relay over there, and then I have that uh, 30, 30, or a, a 20 amp fuse coming off of that. But uh, so yeah, well, so now you can see when I hit the the ignition, I got a switch power over there triggering the relay. So that turns on right there. So I got the boost gauge. Oh, the wideband O2 sensor is heating up again, and uh, so yeah. So now, now I know it, when this light is on, I know that that pump is running all the time. Uh, during the day, that might be kind of a pain in the ass to see, but uh, but I figured you know it'll, it'd be just kind of extra insurance knowing, and you could hear the relay clicking too. So 
So even on, on accessories, it's on all the time. So. so you can see that's full lean. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Right now I am uh, hooked up to my HP tuners cable and uh, I am currently downloading the stock file or the stock tune off of the car. Um, I've already kind of done it before and looked at it but I have not actually like hit the settings or whatever or, or hit the, the deal to where I could actually register it and tune on that file. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and once it does that I'm going to go ahead and buy the credits. I think it's around 100 bucks. It's fifty dollars a credit, and it takes two credits, uh, so that I can tune the ECU on this. And uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. So what I'm going to start off by doing at first is just deleting some check engine lights. It has check engine light right now for like rear O2 sensors because I don't have them plugged in. But uh, but yeah, so I got I'm going to do that, and then uh, maybe do a couple other things. Maybe see if I could put in the scaling for the mass airflow sensor, and then look at the injector settings too, and I might install those. And uh, but I might do that tomorrow. But uh, I'm just kind of checking for tonight to see what uh, what I could do, kind of fiddle around with it a little bit. So. It just sounds fucking like it's it's just like ready. It's like yep. I just don't wanna go raise people in this fucking thing. <laughs> Look at this guy on the crown of the egg, and I need to just fuck him up. So yeah, in that uh, in that little drive, it, it definitely got lean when I was getting into uh, into boost a little bit, about one or two pounds. It was staying about 14, you know, 14, 15 AFR. So that's definitely not safe. I want that around 12 or so. But uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go home for the night. Let my uh, computer charge up. Come back tomorrow and install the the injectors. I'm also gonna get a valve cover gasket and some uh, like one or two stage colder spark plugs for it. You can see back uh, back right there, the valve cover is uh, is leaking, and you can't see it, but there's a spot that'll it actually drips. There's a spot that actually drips on the header, which is like right there, that little spot. And so anyhow, it, uh, I don't know, when I was like sitting at the, the parking, or, like sitting there idling or, you know, you, you rev it and then it uh, gets hot and then it, it smells like the damn turbo's blown and I'm like, I don't know if like that pump went out or like my rear mount turbo is like not a good idea, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, I'll uh, do all that stuff tomorrow, put the injectors in, and uh, and yeah, then I should be able to mess with the tune a little bit more. 
I'll, uh, I'm gonna email a, a guy that seems like uh, he's on one of the like the Ford like modular like performance uh, groups, and he looks like he's he's messed a lot with uh, with actually tuning these with HP tuners. So I'm gonna ask him some questions. I'm gonna try to get a hold of him um, and see if I can get this thing figured out. But uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. So it's uh, it's day two of trying to tune this son of a bitch. Jesse thinks he knows what's going on. No, I don't know. Jesse, anything. what were you trying to tell me to do? I don't know anything. I don't know what it is. Okay, he doesn't know what it is. I don't know what it is. No, it's just the fuel table is just way too damn tiny. I don't know. It's it's stupid. I think the stock injectors. So what I'm doing right now is I am gonna pull the this pipe off of here. I'm gonna pull the valve covers off here. Because I got me a intake or a valve cover gasket set, as well as some NGK plugs and a little thing. So, I uh, figured do the spark plugs, the injectors, and the valve cover gaskets all at the same time. And then I'll mess with the tune because I, I, I know I could for sure uh, scale the injectors. But yeah, how many of you guys think I need a, a damn. Do you, hey, do you think I need a haircut? Mm -mm. Why? Is that dope? No haircut. No haircut, thug group, dude. Look at, look at the back. Oh. What the hell is what's going on back there? I'm trying to copy your brother. I don't I don't know what the hell to do with this shit. Like I, I, I don't know if, if you guys can't tell. Like I kind of don't give a shit. Like like what I look like. <laughs> like for the most part, like like I don't know. I I, I put a hat on in the morning and, and that's pretty much it. I my beard's kind of half-ass trim. My girlfriend trims my my hair and my beard like once every like month or so, and then I just I'll style it for like one day. And that's it. I kind of like just making it look like crazy as shit, though. Maybe, maybe that's my new thing. But anyhow, I'm gonna throw you guys on a time lapse. I'm gonna get this shit done. I wanna do it. I wanna do a fucking a fat pill in this son of a bitch. Cause, uh, cause I want I want Haggard Garage to wear my damn T-shirts. What do you think about that? Yeah, dude, you can do. Uh... Uh oh, there you go, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. Uh, so this, I mean, it wasn't terrible to get out, but it was, there's definitely a little bit more shit in there. But look at this damn engine. This thing supposedly has 250,000 miles on it. And look at that shit. It looks like it's like, literally like brand new. There's no like copper looking shit in there. Everything's like nice and shiny and, and still like silver in it. It's not, you know, normally like these high mileage engines like this, especially being beat on by like a taxi cab driver, as well as the the police and all that stuff. Um, normally, you'd, they'd be like golden. I'm like golden brown almost. And this thing's just like looks like it like has like 10,000 miles on it. That's crazy. All right, so I got the the valve cover gasket all on there, brand new. Got all this sh shit cleaned off. Got a little dab of uh, some gray RTV right there on kind of the where the two of the like castings kind of mate together. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna throw that thing back in. Say it. Well, it must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyhow, we got. Uh, we got this side off, that, that wasn't actually too bad. I just had to unhook a lot of random shit. It looked like it wasn't gonna come out of there. And I, ju I just can't get over like how clean that shit is. I guess that's what happens when it's in a, a fleet application and they actually like change the oil with like synthetic and shit. Cause this thing is like requires synthetic. But uh, yeah, so got the new, new valve cover on it, got the new gr grommets and everything ready to go. So I just gotta slap it back on there. Part five, Crown Vic. Doing uh, shit. Okay, so uh, so I'm over here. I had the air hose out. The air hose out. I uh, was blowing out the spark plug holes. I got this uh, this valve cover gasket back on. I got a little bit of goop right there, kind of uh, you know in between the the little deal. I went ahead and I threw in the, the 80 pound injectors and uh, just been blowing out the the spark plug hole. 
trying to get all the there's basically just a bunch of like dirt and like lee it looked like leaves and shit in there and sand and all that stuff um i don't know how well you guys will be able to see this right here but look at that huge huge gap um in those spark plugs so that that's how the other side was we'll see how uh see how this side looks i'm definitely glad i got all those uh all that grime and shit out of there because man these things were nasty like in the spark plug holes you could even see like going down the sides of them they're just they're they're gross yeah so most of these are auto lights um these things are coming coming in pre-gapped um pretty pretty small um i think they're like point point oh point oh two three or so so I'm, I'm gapping them um i think this is thousands i don't know what the hell this is but 0.03 is basically kind of where i'm i'm setting them at just so that the you run a colder spark plug and a little bit tighter gap on the spark plug so that the boost doesn't blow out the spark so yeah this side's uh ready to put all the the shit back together all i really need to do on this other side is uh pop up the fuel rail and throw those other injectors in it. So got uh, everything in the engine bay all hooked back up. Uh, I think everything's hooked back up. And uh, for now, oh, I guess I should probably hook up my oil return line. I kind of want to do something different with this oil return because I kind of feel like I would like to use this uh, this basically port right here as actual crankcase ventilation instead of like just pouring my oil back in there and I'd kind of like to put a one-way valve in that line too so that it's actually not so as soon as it pushes it past the pump it can't go back because I because especially with it going uphill I feel like once it once you let the car sit it kind of runs back into itself so before I start it I usually let it uh, let it run for like 30 seconds or so okay so I'm gonna attempt to uh, calibrate these injectors um, is uh, it's kind of the plan right now so I can't I can't start it I can't crank it over I can't do nothing yet basically because it's gonna uh, shoot a bunch of fuel in there like way 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 too much fuel um, so I'm gonna get on uh, Simons or Siemens DECA uh, they they provide like the injector data so these are 80 pound injectors so I'm gonna have to get in here and uh, and basically change the settings and uh, basically tell it that uh, it has 80 pound injectors in it instead of uh, 27 pound injectors and then now I'm gonna edit it so I'm gonna go to the engine I'm gonna go here to fuel right here it says flow rate low 27 pounds an hour and then flow rate high is 23 pounds an hour um, so flow rate high multi versus pressure so that basically, basically the, I'm going to have to change a lot of this stuff right here and that's probably going to take quite a while because I'm going to have to actually Google, Google some stuff, Google the injector, like the latency, the, the latency values and like the, the pressure ratios and all that shit and basically put that in here so it knows what injectors are in it. All right, so I'm kind of irritated with this thing, so I'm probably going to go home uh, again for the night. So basically, it's just uh, crank no starting. I It doesn't seem like it, I don't, I don't know if it has spark. I tried to pull the coil out and look at it and ground it and grounded the spark plug. I don't know. I don't know if it has spark or what the deal is. Um, so I didn't like actually start it up after I took everything apart with like the stock injectors and all that stuff. Uh, I went straight to the 80 pound ones and then tried to scale them. So then I went ahead and tried to start it and it smelled super, it just smelled like fuel essentially and the exhaust didn't even smell like like it was rich, like it was even attempting to burn it, it just smelled like fuel in the exhaust. So I'm assuming it wasn't getting any spark at all. I pulled the plug and it, it didn't look, I don't know, It's it's been stupid. So I'm uh, 
the HP this this HP tuners thing for this car is super super confusing, and it it, it it's an emissions computer. Like that's I mean that's that's all there is to it. It's it's to meet emissions. It's for a stock engine that wasn't meant to be boosted, and it's just a pain in the ass, is what it is. Um, so I, I don't know. It's it's interesting, but. I'm uh, I'm just kind of not sure exactly what to uh, what to do about it because I have the 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 pieces that I could put in here I put in here some other stuff like the offset versus voltage offset multi versus pressure and some of the other things I can't figure out because there isn't anything online and I need to do some more research on figuring out how to do that um, but yeah so I'm I'm basically done with it for the tonight and uh, and we'll see if we can get her figured out. Sorry if anything in this video kind of jumped around or didn't make sense. Like I said at the beginning, I, uh, I lost some of the footage. Uh, I thought I filmed a couple of the segments and I had a lot more in this thing. So apologize, it's, uh, it's not the, the extra long type, but, uh, but I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, um, another section of the, the video that I can't find is I went back and I actually installed the blow valve. I did a few little, uh, little mounting tricks, um, like right here. I mounted some little tabs on there, uh, basically the same underneath the car, and uh, and I filmed all that stuff, and that's all gone too. So yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm going to leave this video for at for today. Uh, the next video will be part six, and that will be me going over uh, actually tuning some stuff, working through some issues with that. But uh, stay tuned with that thing. See if we can get this thing started in the next video. But uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching, sticking around, and I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this uh, this little Crown Vic build. Um, I, uh, all the stickers and everything are back in stock on the Motion OTV uh, Big Cartel web store. So be sure to check those out. It helps support the channel. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and, uh, and look forward to the next, next video.